Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to do password hashing in Flask. So before I get started, I just want to show you this cheat sheet that I made. If you uh, are kind of new to Flask and you want a basic reference guide, I think this cheat sheet will be perfect for you. So to get this cheat sheet, just go down to the link in the description below and uh, you can download the PDF. So for hashing in Flask, I'm going to use a library that Flask is actually built on top of. So if you have Flask installed, you don't have to install any additional dependencies. And this library has a German name. Now I'm not German, I've never spoken German, and I can't pronounce German sounds. So when I pronounce the name of this library, I'm going to mess it up. But the name of the library is Workzerg. So by using Workzerg, you can uh, hash passwords in Flask without having to uh, install anything else, install any other uh, plugins. In my other videos, I've used Bcrypt before, but in this particular video, Workserk will be enough. So to get started, I'm going to do a very simple Flask app. And this is going to be a contrived example, by the way, but uh, I think you will be able to figure out the parts that I won't go over. So um, typically you would want to store a hash password in a database, but I won't be connecting to any database here. I'm just going to use a single route. So here's the basic app without any of the hashing stuff. So let me just start it to make sure that it's working. Python hashing. And I'll refresh. Okay, it says hi. That's exactly what I wanted. So to include the password hashing functions, I'll import from WorkZerk. So from WorkZerk, uh, W-E-R-K-Z-E-U-G dot security. And like I said, this is already included in Flask since Flask is built on top of it. So you don't have to uh, use pip to install anything. And you want to import two functions. These functions are generate password hash and check password hash. Okay, so now that you have these two functions, you can actually uh, generate a password and then check a password uh, by comparing it to the hash that was generated before. So with this route, I'll take in um, a value. So let's just call it password. And whatever password gets passed in, I'm actually going to hash it. So uh, I'll say hashed value is going to be equal to a uh, generate password hash and actually you don't have to pass in anything other than the password in a moment I'll tell you what else you can pass in but for now password will be fine and then I simply want to return this hashed value so we can take a look at it so I'll save this uh, the server should restart automatically which it does and I'll refresh and it is complaining about something so I guess oh that's because I didn't apply a password yeah uh, my super secret password okay so I passed in my super secret password and it went ahead and ahead and hashed it for me so this is basically the result this whole string here is what you would store in the database so of course you want to make sure your column is big enough wherever you're storing it in the database if you're using like a SQL database uh, so this goes into the database and then Whenever you need to compare that same password, you would use this hash value and compare it to the new password that is passed in. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it in the code since we're not using any kind of database here. So I'll say um, stored password is this. So one thing you want to note is that you never store the plain text password. So the password that gets passed in, once it's hashed, you don't do anything with it. You discard it in a sense. You only work with a hashed uh, value of the password. You put that in the database. That's what makes it secure. So now that I have the stored password, one thing I want to do is uh, check and see if a password that I pass in matches this hash. So to do that, I'll do... Um, check password hash so I'll say result is check password hash the first value that you pass in is the password that you store in your database which is just a variable here and the second value you pass in is the actual password so I'll comment this out for now 
And then uh, instead of hash value, I'll return the results. And since it's a Boolean, I'll convert it to a string. So if the password that I pass in matches this hash, then it will re return true. And if it doesn't, it will return false. So uh, I'll refresh this route and it says true. And I'm passing in my super secret password. If I pass in something else like my other password, it returns false because the uh, hash no longer works. But if I type in my super secret password again, it returns true. So whatever I type in, it will only return true if I type in that original password. And as you can see here, I'm only using that password that I'm passing in the routes uh, to check it. Then I'm returning the result. So one last thing is when generating the hash, you can specify a method. So I believe it defaults to, well, I don't have to check. It defaults to pbkdf2 uh, SHA-1 and it does it a thousand times. So if you want to change these values, um, the first two are in the method. Those are the ones that you're likely to change. So if I wanted to change this to say SHA-256, I can do that and I'll return the hash value again. And we'll see how it changes. So I'll save that and I'll just do this on password. Now you see how the beginning changed to SHA-256. So uh, you can change this to anything, the, the method to anything that can be done in Hashlib. So I'll put a link down to Hashlib uh, in the description below so you will know which hash algorithms you can use. But I don't want to get into which one you should use because it seems like every day um, it changes on what the recommendations are. So I'll leave it to you to figure out which ones. The default should be good enough for your purposes. I say that right now, but of course... Maybe it isn't. So uh, like I said, if you're really concerned about security, I highly recommend that you read up on Hashlib and the different algorithms that are available to you. So that's it for this video. Um, if you have any questions about using WorkZerg to hash passwords, just leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.